I didn't really know how to start this video. I'm a long-term Saints Row fan, and I've always preferred the Saints Row series over the types of games it was actually a parody of. Admittedly, I never actually played the first Saints Row game, but I enjoyed the second and I loved Saints Row the third and Saints Row 4. I really liked the over-the-top satirical nature the franchise was going in, where game franchises like Grand Theft Auto leaned more into realism and creating a world you could imagine being in, Saints Row went the complete other direction, with the action scenes being at home in a cheesy 90s action movie and the humour being slapstick but self-aware, and the story walking the line between being pretty epic and completely off the rails bonkers. So when I heard there was a remake on the way, I was skeptical, but optimistic. I loved the original franchise, so of course, I was willing to give this a go. And this was my first mistake. Saints Row 2022 is a reboot for the franchise with an attempt at taking a familiar but new direction. The overall gameplay design and kookiness of the world is still there, but it's just kind of off. I think the best way I could describe it is instead of it feeling like a modernized reboot of the franchise, it feels more like a cheap copy. As if somebody looked at Saints Row the Third and asked, hey, can I copy your homework? And it was all like, sure, just make it look different so it doesn't look like you copied. Sure thing. Saints Row 2022 takes place in Santo Aliso, a lawless fictional city in the southwest of America, overrun by gangs and crime. You are the new boss of the Saints, and along with your crew, Nina, Kevin, and Eli, you form the Saints and build your new criminal venture. Comparatively to the previous Saints Row games, Saints Row 2022 feels pretty... flat. I don't know, I couldn't put my finger on it. You play a game like Saints Row the Third, and even though the gameplay can feel a little standard at times, the story had set-piece moments that put you in these action movie situations that felt pretty epic in a dual-wielding, sunglasses-on kind of way. I mean, check this out. So far with my time in Saints Row 2022, it has been missing this, and it's noticeable. The gameplay of Saints Row 2022 is pretty much what you would expect from the franchise. Third person, open world shooter with a good range of weapons to get your hands on, and of course there's also a bunch of vehicles you can buy or hijack to get yourself around. If I'm honest, the shooting doesn't feel too great, which is a shame because it's one thing you'll be doing a lot of. I'm not quite sure what it was, but I don't think I've ever had to mess around with the camera settings in a game this much before. It was just kind of off. I played on PC and tried the game out with both keyboard and mouse and a controller. It felt best with the controller, with there being a fair bit of driving in-game, and driving controls aren't really a strength of a keyboard. But yikes, the shooting with a controller, it just doesn't feel good at all. At a certain point, I honestly started to think it must be me, because I only really play action games with a controller and a shooter with a keyboard and mouse, so I booted up a few other games with the controller. Nope. Not just me. Driving feels fine, but nothing exciting, feeling pretty dated compared to modern games. Something I did enjoy are the changes to takedowns. Instead of these just being stylish finishing moves, they're now used more as your primary healing mechanic. When you see this purple icon in the bottom center of the screen, you can now do a takedown on an enemy, taking them down and getting a good chunk of health back in return. After you've used it, it goes on cooldown, showing you this percentage. Each time you get a kill, it speeds it up, getting it off cooldown faster. This is a mechanic we've seen in other games like Doom or Space Marine, and I've always really enjoyed it. It encourages run and gun chaotic gameplay, rewarding you for getting into the thick of the fight. There is also different skills and perks you can get in-game to help build your character. Perks give you little bonuses, and skills kind of got me excited, then sadly started to let me down a little. The first skill you get is Pineapple Express, and this is very Saints Row. Using Pineapple Express grabs an enemy, sticks a grenade down their pants, and lets you throw them towards another enemy. Great. This gave me real Saints Row feels and left me looking forward to see what was coming up next in the skills. But sadly after that, they just kind of got pretty basic. A smokescreen, increased health, temp damage buff, and the ability to throw a grenade. I haven't unlocked all of the skills yet, but I really do hope they pick up a little bit later on. 
One place I really cannot fault Saints Row 2022 is customization. From the hugely flexible character creator to vehicles and even your weapons, it feels like you can make your boss and your gear look any way you like, which is great by me. I'm a big fan of really making my playthroughs my own, so customization goes a long way, especially when it's this deep. I actually started out my playthrough with a bit of an unusual voice choice. But luckily you can change pretty much anything you like about your character whenever you like, opposed to it being locked just to the game's opening. As for the missions, I don't want to go too much into them for the sake of spoilers, but I'm sad to say the story missions felt like variations of drive here, shoot bad guys, with what feels like a fairly repetitive gameplay loop, which I have to confess, I did get a little bored of playing. There are a few cool moments, but they are quickly overshadowed by the not so good writing. The side activities all fall into the same repetitive open world game kind of category. They aren't bad, but after you've done it once, you've pretty much seen everything. For example, chopper lifting. Go to place, pick up thing, drop off thing. Not bad, but pretty much what you can expect from each of these missions. Or riding shotgun, which is essentially being a gunner for an AI driven car for a short period, protecting it until it reaches its destination. Not bad, just not great either. And while messing around in the open world, there were a few things that started to feel more like a downgrade. So at one point I got a little bored, so I thought I would hold up the weapon store I was in and the shopkeep didn't even care. Took a few shots like a champ, no police, no handing over cash, not even taking damage. And I remembered this being quite a thing in Saints Row the Third, so I booted up Saints Row the Third Remastered just to see what would happen if I did the same thing. And yes, Although the remaster was released in 21, the original game was developed in 2011 and the person behind the till puts her hands up, hands over the cash, then hits a panic button calling the police. I mean, just think about that compared to this. Performance wise, I can't say I noticed any major issues. I'm running the game on an RTX 2080 Ti with an Intel i7 8700K and it ran fairly smooth. At 1080p with all settings on Ultra and DLSS on, I saw between 130 to 100 FPS, with some lows of 90. There was the odd stutter, but nothing to really write home about, and I was pretty happy with the performance overall. For those interested in bottlenecks, Saints Row 2022 seems to be very GPU heavy, with my 2080 Ti showing 95% usage, and my CPU only being around 40 to 45%. Visually, this is not a good looking game. Everything looks very flat and smooth in an untextured kind of way. Traveling around the world feels like it's void of the spectacles you expect from open world games. Those views that make you stop and just want to kind of take it all in. And this is amplified by just how quiet and barren the world feels. There's no activity or life here. And the NPCs you do see wandering around feel like they haven't really moved on since the early 2000s. And I've also got to say as a side note, the sound of the vehicles slowly started to wear on my soul. It's not that the vehicle audio is bad, but I had the game in streamer mode, which removes all copyright audio, so I could record footage worry free. And this was the treat that awaited me. It removed all of the music without replacing it with anything but kept these random radio announcements, which was weird and a little jarring. A little copyright free music here really wouldn't have gone amiss. Making this video made me a little sad. Saints Row 2022 is unfortunately a skin deep shadow of the franchise it was hoping to reboot with cringy writing, repetitive gameplay, and a forgettable open world. The character customization is genuinely very good, with your character, outfits, vehicles, and weapons all being fully customizable, which helps you create a playthrough that is truly yours. I did enjoy the changes to takedowns, making them more engaging and rewarding aggressive gameplay. It's just unfortunate that the shooting and the skills I've seen so far do little to back that up. I was hoping for more from this game, but after this I imagine this will be the last instalment we may see from the Saints Row franchise. To end this video, I'm going to award Saints Row 2022 
go play Saints Row the Third Remastered instead out of 10. I don't do a lot of reviews, but I always enjoy making them. So if you enjoyed this one, give it a like just to let me know. Also, while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads. As always, a massive thank you to my supporters over on Patreon for helping me make this channel the best it can be. And if you would like to join them, you can support the channel for as little as £1 a month. I'll leave a link to the Patreon in the description below. Have a great day, and I will catch you in the next one.